As I'm sure you guys know by my previous videos, I've been on the Queen Mary, learning all about its hauntings from my incredible guide and having experiences of my own. For today's video, I wanted to give you guys the once in a lifetime opportunity of heading into all the haunted corners of the Queen Mary and hearing the stories straight from my guide. Oh, and the letter of the day is Y. <laughs> <laughs> I am authorized. Please come on in. Wait for me by the red canister. Okay. Well, now we're locked in. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Let's continue on. Now the doors are still open, so there may be members yeah. of the public in here. Uh, <laughs> totally normal. Yeah. So, as we are walking in here, if this looks like a bit of a hospital with this sterile green and white. This is the isolation ward. Okay. This was where we kept contagious passengers just to keep them away from the rest of the ship so they didn't infect everybody on board. Right. There's a room right ahead of us. Please watch your step as you come in. This was the women's bunk. Okay. So if it was a contagious lady, this is where they'd be and their nurses would be right next door in this small room off the side. Can I go in here? Absolutely. Oh, wow. Here's the bunks. So this is where the nurses would stay then? Mm-hmm. So the nurses' bunks, they would have had a little bathroom right there, the sink. Right. Now, this room wasn't used often. There okay. weren't that many contagious passengers coming across. What this room was mostly used for was isolating stowaways. Okay. And we had over 200 stowaways discovered in our 31 years of sailing. Right. And there's a few things you can do if you discover a stowaway on board. Mm -hmm. You charge them a full fare and let them off. If they can't pay, you keep them on board and send them back home. That's a two week round trip. Right. Or you put them to work. Uh huh. Some people went to work and they loved it and they stayed with us. Right. They worked off their debt. Now, Two of those 200 some stowaways took the fourth option. They commit suicide. Right. Here. Okay. While in our custody. We don't know why. Right. We're still trying to figure that out. So, this was the men's ward over on this side, it mirrored the women's ward on that side. Okay. So, we have removed it. The nurse's station for the men would have been on the other side of this wall. Yep. But now, we have a medical display. Right including lists. Okay. Passengers and crew members who have died on board the ship. Wow. It's a big list. It's not complete. Oh. There are still more names that we are still discovering. Wow. Collapsed on board, not recorded. A lot of them aren't recorded. Exactly. Heart failure, fatal it, fall from ship. Mm -hmm. There were a few people who went overboard. There were a few infants that were sailing aboard that didn't make the crossings. They were, yeah. Uh, this was a, a premature Wow. A youngster who came across and just didn't make it all the way across. Yeah. Wow. Skull fracture due to the fall. She fell down a stairwell here at the back end of the ship. Wow. And so again, it's not very descriptive. Yeah. Because being a ship, this is all that's written down in the logs. Right. The isn't done until they're sent back to land. Right. And those records just don't make it back to us. So not only did we lose some passengers, You'll notice there are only four listings from World War II. Right. There would have been dozens, if not hundreds, of casualties on board as we're returning from war. Some of the soldiers did, didn't survive. The right. Injuries. We don't have any of those records. The British government has kept them all sealed. Huh. Isn't it true that the Queen Mary was in an accident with another ship? We're going to go up to that space. Okay. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. Uh, you're fine, you're fine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, do you have any questions about any of the stories that you've heard? Yeah, rescues at sea. Yes, so we had a full service hospital on board our ship. We were so large, we carried 2,000 passengers. We needed a full hospital. Right. If a smaller ship had an injured passenger that they couldn't treat, we could pull up alongside, bring them on board our ship using a cradle. Yeah. On board, treat them, and send them back on their way. Wow. So that would happen every once in a while. Like here you can see a photograph yeah. of some of our crew members hoisting someone up from another ship. Wow, it's crazy. 
That would be so scary being transported in that. Especially since the boat deck, the uh, sun deck, is about 75 to 80 feet above the water line. Wow, so you gotta be raised in that. You're gonna be in that Dang. for a while. So basically, <laughs> somebody would <sighs> just be strapped in here and lay on their back and be hoisted. Right oh my back. goodness, that would be terrifying. Yeah. Wow. So we've also, unfortunately, it's a workplace. Mm -hmm. We've lost some crew members on board as well. The very first fatality that we had on board the ship was our first voyage mm -hmm. heading back to England. Able seaman. Arthur J. Golden, scrubbing the deck, two o'clock in the morning, slipped and fell, cracked his skull. Wow. The last fatality that we had was coming here to Long Beach. Uh -huh. First voyage, last voyage. Wow. Now, because our ship is as large as it is, we can't fit through the Panama Canal, and so we had to go all the way around South America and come all the way back mm -hmm. to the other side. That's crossing the equator twice in a ship that wasn't really built with air conditioning. He had heat stroke. Wow. Great hemorrhage due to that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, the crushed in the watertight door. That's that's one of the like noted hauntings. Yes, we're heading there as well. The cruise industry, they don't advertise this. They lose about 200 passengers a year. Right. Oh, wow. Play the numbers. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> odds. Um, so about 200 people die a year on cruise ships, and so you have to have facilities for them. We didn't. Ships of our era just weren't built in with that. So we had to make do. There's two hatchway doors right here. Mm -hmm. Those doors led into our storerooms for the ship. Right. The kitchen storeroom. Mm -hmm. So you go through those doors, you go forward, and that would have been vegetables and fruit. You go through the doors and come this way. This was the freezer. Right. Ice cream, ice, beer. Mm -hmm. With the dead people. Makeshift awesome. morgue. Oh. Have been right there. Oh my goodness. There's two things you can do if you die at sea be brought back to land or be buried at sea. If you were a crew member, you told them ahead of time when you took the job what your last wishes were just in case. Wow. And so we did have a number of crew members who were buried at sea because that's what they had requested. Right. If a passenger died, we would call ahead to their next of kin and ask them do you want us to bring the body back? or bury them at sea with full honors. Most off offered for the return. Again, do you watch your step? Yep. So everybody knows about the swimming pool, the first mm -hmm. class swimming pool. Mm -hmm. We had two. There was a second class swimming pool. It was right here. It is now the 4D theater. So the theater is built on top of the tank of the pool. Right. And everybody's heard about the first class dressing rooms for their pool. It's the home of the vortex. Mm -hmm. It's an area of energy that allows spirits to visit. The second class dressing rooms were right here. Now, we don't have a record of anyone drowning or dying in the pool. You saw the list upstairs. There's no little girl named Jackie on it. Mm -hmm. We don't know where she came from. Okay. But there's a theory that you don't have to die somewhere to haunt a place. Okay. It could be a place you absolutely loved being. Mm -hmm. And so maybe she loved the pool. And after she passed away of natural causes, she found her way back to us. Yeah. Some people think she might have even been a second-class passenger and upgraded. Mm -hmm. I heard that. Yeah. Never know. So that's the second class pool right there. Have you ever heard Jackie? I have not. Um, I've never seen anything that I can't explain, but I've had a few experiences on board. Right. Um, I'll tell you one once we get to the space where it happened. Okay. Um, but if I see a little girl running around the corner, giggle, uh, I'll tell you about the collision once we get to the forward end of the ship. Um, but we did collide with another ship during World War II. 338 men were killed in that collision all on board the other ship. I'm going to take you to a room that creeps people out. Okay. It's the propeller box. The last remaining propeller still attached to the ship. We're going to leave the Queen Mary. We're going to go outside, look down into the water. Some people have an uneasy feeling here, and they equate it to that collision. 
with some of those men. Got it. Okay. This way. Ooh. Good. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I would have a heart attack. We just clear this tank out and we found a dozen cell phones in it. So mm -hmm. Oh my now this is the original one from the glass here. It's a long beach. Uh, it's not the original one from our maiden of the way to this which been out for years. But this is the one that brought us here. It is 18 feet across. It weighs 32 times. Wow. <laughs> Could you imagine? It goes that way. <laughs> that would be really bad. Now, I'm going to warn you. This is all new. Okay. This is part of our Halloween event. It comes through here, so they have decorated to make it look a little worse than it is. Okay. So, yeah. We are now standing by door 13. Oh my goodness. Watertight door 13 is one of 38 doors that we had. Door number 15 is right behind me and an escalator Ooh. door 11 is ahead of us. Yeah. It's a little cold down here because we're under the water line. Now door 13, well the doorway is larger than it used to be. It used to stop right about here. This is the top of the door. Right. And so we've cut this larger here in Long Beach so we can pass through more easily. Now, in the event of a collision, or fog, or just any bad storm, the captain could order all of these doors closed. It takes about 40 seconds to close the door. Most of that is just building up your pressure, sounding the alarms. The last six seconds is this door closing. Right. Three feet, six seconds, enough force to hold back 30 tons of water. Also, if we had a fire break out in one of these areas, we close all the doors, these red canisters, CO2 canisters. We would release that and that would snuff out any fire. Okay. July 10th, 1966, the ship hit a fog bank. It's early in the morning, it's about four o'clock. All the doors are ordered closed from the bridge. All you do is crank the two wheels and all the doors start closing. Every door closed properly except for this one. The engineers came down here to check they were horrified to find when they arrived, one of their crew members was pinned by the door. Young man, 18 years old. He was a greaser. He basically took care of the propeller shafts here in the engine room. It was only his fifth shift on board the ship, his fifth voyage. Wow. No signs of life were detected when they arrived. The right. doctor gave him a shot of morphine just in case. They opened the door, released him, took him to the hospital. He was pronounced dead. Wow. We don't know the circumstances around his death. We don't know why he was caught in the door. There's a lot of theories. He was playing chicken, jumping back and forth through. The door's only this tall. There's a step. You're not going right. to make it back and forth through a number of times. Right. I know he was 18, but I was 18. I'm never stupid enough to play with him. Yeah. Like um, some people think he might have dropped a tool behind him. He was just trying to reach back and get it before the door closed. Uh, the reason people think that is because the paranormal researchers come down here and when it gets really quiet, they've done recordings and they can hear a voice saying, where's my wedge? Oh. I feel like there's something over there. Yeah. Um, these are the crew member catwalks and you see they go all over the place. The easiest way to tell if it's original to the ship is they only have this top handrail. We have the safety railings to keep you from sliding through. Yeah. They did not. So if you see that just the top handrail, those are all the original catwalks. I've seen bearded crew members, young bearded crew members walking on the cabins. Wow. Uh, one of our tour guides back in the 80s, I believe it was, she was making her rounds and closing this area up for the night. You have to walk through, make sure all the lights are off. And she was heading up the escalator. And about halfway up this first one, she turned around because she felt like she was being followed and there was a man on the escalator riding with her. She was a little scared. She was reaching for her radio by the time she got up to the top. She turned around and he was there. Wow. There's not anywhere else to go down here. Yeah. Uh, that door's permanently locked. This is, goes back to the engine room. So you can see if something is Wow. Uh, 
Um, I did a late night tour, this is probably about two years ago, and we do a two hour tour called Ship Walk, and I bring my group down here, and we come through this way. So I pass them through door 13 before I tell them about it. Make some more fun that way. And so we stopped here and I told them the story, and the last guy in the group hadn't quite come through the door yet. And as he passed through, he felt really tight in the chest. He laughed it off. He thought, he just told me the story about somebody being crushed, I'm gonna feel that. But he was a guest at the hotel, and he was staying here on board, and he found me the next day, told me when he got back to his stateroom, he took his shirt off. He had a large red scratch or bruise. He doesn't remember getting anywhere else. Wow. Now, the noises you hear, <laughs> those are common. Yeah. Noises. So I'm familiar with those. If I hear a noise down here that I haven't heard before, You'll say. clear path. <laughs> <laughs> Not supposed to be this dark right here. Normally there's light? Huh. That's a new noise. That was a new noise? Oh. So these are two of our engines. We had four. Everything on this half of the room is one engine. Everything on this half is another one. Wow. We were a steamship, so the steam would come in from the boiler rooms, go into these four turbines, spin these gears here, and those gears are what turn the propeller shaft. Right. It only took five people to run this room, so it would be pretty quiet, pretty lonely as far as a crew member. The noise in here would be so loud you had to communicate by hand signals, but as far as the activity of the staff, there's really not much to do. Your shift was only four hours. Four hours on, eight off, four on, eight off. That's your day. Oh. Just repeat for five days. The heat in here, it would get up to about 115 degrees in the summertime all day long. Day wow. Long. It doesn't matter. Is this where that crew member that died would live with the, the last one? This is it. Uh, no. Uh, oh. The crew member who had the uh, heat stroke, he was a cook. He was oh, okay. up in the kitchens. It seemed like this would be the place. It would be. Um, if you were working in here, you didn't have rubber or leather soled shoes. They would have eventually burned off. The soles of your shoes were made out of wood. Oh, wow. So from here you can get a better view of some of the machinery that we have. Yeah. Again, this is all one engine on this side. This is the gear case right here. That main gear that turns the propeller is 14 feet tall and weighs 53 and a half tons. Wow. You know, no mm -hmm. big deal. Mm -hmm. Very much. Where's the here? Yeah, right here. Earlier, there was an orb here. Interesting. Well, that's kind of cool. And we're You'd asked about the lifeboats. Right. We have this one here. Uh, it's the same vintage as the Titanic's lifeboats. This was built at about the same time in about the same shipyard. From the White Star Line. This is the last White Star Line lifeboat in existence. Wow. It came off a smaller ship called the SS Nomadic. Yeah. It's a tender ship. It's 200 feet long. The Titanic was too big to fit in the port at Cherbourg, France. And so a smaller ship, a tender ship, would bring passengers out to it as it docked in the harbor. Right. This was built because of the Titanic. Really? So this is the ship that brought passengers from Cherbourg, France, out to the Titanic on her maiden voyage. Wow. This lifeboat is slightly smaller than the Titanic's lifeboats. It holds, they say, about 40 people. It doesn't look like it, but if your ship is sinking, if you're, it holds yeah. 40 people. Uh, wow. After World War II, when the Queen Mary would make its regular stops in Cherbourg, France, we also couldn't fit in the harbor. The Nomadic brought passengers to us as well. So this lifeboat 
has seen both of our ships in service. Wow. It's a direct link between us and the Titanic. Well. It is on loan to us right now, but touch a piece of history from the Titanic's time period. That's crazy. Fascinating. Wow. Hmm. 30 years old and it's across the earth. Wow. Oh, this isn't sketchy at all. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Again, this Spooky. is our one crew member elevator that we have, so the fabric has been put to protect the wood veneer that's underneath it. This is all the original woodwork inside. It's only an 85 year old elevator. That's only, yeah. yeah. That's it. So we'll go back to BTAC. Hello, how are you? Hi. We have one more to go. You may have heard of this number. Yes, B-474. It is claimed that in this room there was a murder-suicide. A man went crazy, strangled his two young daughters, Dana and Penny, before killing his wife and then himself. That story really happened. Wow. In Virginia. At the family's home. Oh. It did not happen in this room. So we've gone through our history. Right. We find a connection to that story, though. The grandmother of the little girls was sailing home on the Queen Mary the morning the murders happened. Oh, wow. So maybe they came here. Maybe they were looking for her. Oh, so... And guess which room she was staying in? For C-15. <laughs> oh! Complete other end of the ship. Nowhere near here. Okay. But we hear the little girls all over the ship. We hear them in here, we hear them by the pool, and we hear them in the forward cargo area, which is where C-15 used to be. Okay. So instead of their mother, maybe they're calling out for their grandmother. Right. Yeah. How 474 got involved in the story? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. We're not sure. We're not sure. Interesting. That was the rumor for our room. <laughs> nope, yours is real. Yes. <laughs> As you can tell. As I, can tell. <laughs> I would say sorry about that, but a lot of people pay extra for that As kind of experience. So. We did, so yep. Yeah. Now, one little interesting tidbit as we're walking down the hallways, you will see these strange keyholes. Mm -hmm. They're in pairs, top and bottom. And gates. Dividing the classes. Third class, or second class back there, first in the center. If we have fewer first class passengers, move the gates. Allow second class to stay in closer. Okay. We don't have steel bars like Titanic had. It was just a simple wooden gate with an attendant checking your tickets. <laughs> Interesting. So B deck is widely reported to be the most haunted of the three hotel levels that we have. We have M, A, and B currently in service. The rooms used to go down further. We were on D deck by the mm -hmm. elevator, and they went all the way up to the top of the ship. You can get luxury suites at the very top. We've turned that into exhibit and office space these days. But we get more reports from this level than any other spot on the ship. Right. not film The Shining <laughs> on the ship. We filmed happier movies on board, like The Poseidon Adventure. Okay. Mm -hmm. The reason The Poseidon Adventure was filmed on board the ship is because we inspired the original story. Because during World War II, we were struck by a rogue wave that measured approximately 92 feet in height. Mm -hmm. That's the height of the bridge from the, top, uh, from the water line. We went 52 degrees off vertical. They say at 55 degrees, our ship would have rolled over. Wow. There were 15,000 sailors on board, soldiers, World War II. They would have all been lost. Right. There's a feature in the hallways that was not with us on our maiden voyage. Right. We didn't think we needed them originally, but we became known as the Rolling Mary because of how much we rolled side to side. 20 miles of handrails were installed after our first stormy season. Sorry, wow. no worries. He's real, don't worry. <laughs> Not a ghost. <laughs> Enjoy. Thanks. <laughs> They're down to it, I think. Sometimes you just keep walking. <laughs> 
Definitely move. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I've heard that in the engine room. You've heard wow. them saying to get out? Yep. Uh, the paranormal investigator that we have, he came in one night and our tours crossed one time and he called me over. He said, I have this great recording for you I just got last week. And he was standing right there between those main gears where we stopped. Yeah. And he said he had set his tape recorder down and they were just having a conversation. And in the middle of the conversation, there was a voice in the recording that they didn't hear while they were standing there. And it just said, get out. Wow. So we did. <laughs> you are. Right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That room's creepy. We're going to keep on moving. All right. <laughs> I don't want to scratch. <laughs> Is there a doll somewhere? Hope not. Mm -hmm. And this next portion, including the haunted doll, has already been posted here on my channel. So make sure for any parts that you feel as though I'm missing in this tour, you check back on my channel because it's probably already been posted or it will be soon. But let's continue. The interesting stuff. I thought that was the interesting stuff. Wow. No jump scares, right? Hope not. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. Not supposed to be any. This is where it gets interesting. Just watch your step. Yeah, I want to go downstairs after I hear what the doll did. <laughs> Go slowly. The arm is tight. Normally I'm mean and I unscrew the light bulb when we're up here, but I'll be nice. So this is the forward rope locker. This was the bosun's locker. The bosun is the general contractor maintenance guy on the ship. And so he would keep his supplies up here. Over here on the side, you see ropes. Those are the mooring lines which secure us to the dock. Down here, goes all the way down to the bottom of the ship. Mm -hmm. That's the top of our fuel tank all the way at the bottom there. Nice coiled rope to catch all your items that you drop down below. Mm -hmm. The only way down there though is through this hatch these days. Every other access has been long sealed off. During World War II when we were used to carry soldiers, we didn't carry mail. We weren't the RMS we marry at that point. We carried soldiers and prisoners of war. The unruly prisoners of war would have been kept up here, isolated from everybody else, so they couldn't cause trouble. We know of a few that did not survive the crossings. They died of heat stroke down below and were buried at sea without honors. Paranormal experts have lowered their equipment down into these holds and they claim they've heard voices coming from down below. Wow. That's crazy. Mm. Now you did mention the collision. Mm -hmm. During World War II, we were so valuable as a troop transport, Adolf Hitler put a quarter million dollar bounty on us, payable to any submarine commander who could sink us and get us out of the way. Obviously, nobody ever collected that prize. But to be safe, as we sailed, we ran a zigzag course. Every eight to ten minutes, we changed direction in case a submarine was trying to track us. Their torpedoes did not have tracking, you just fired it and off it went. And so if they had fired one, we'd hopefully be in a different spot by the time it arrived. We were never spotted, we were never fired upon. But because of that zigzag, as we approached coastlines, we were vulnerable, we had to slow down. And so escort ships would come out to meet us. Mm -hmm. October 2nd, 1942, the HMS Curacao, a light cruiser, came out to escort us as we approached Northern Ireland. We were running our zigzag, she was in front of us got a little too close, we caught her and split her in half. 338 men were killed in that collision, all on board the Curacao. 
Now that collision happened below us. But this is the very front of the ship. That's the forward bow. Mm -hmm. That collision happened about 15 feet below where we are right now. Technically, still open to the public. I'm hoping. Wait, like, shine your flashlight? Through that hatch. Huh. You can get out there, it's the forward bow. Okay, gotcha. Now, if somebody's looking at this railing. Before you get to that hatch, then. So the collision didn't happen in this section. Again, it was about 15 feet below us. The forward end crushed in about 10 feet in that collision. And fortunately for us, it sealed itself up. And so we didn't take on much water in that collision. We made it to port. We filled the forward end with cement, made it back to Boston, and rebuilt the forward end. The Curacao wasn't so fortunate. Of the 439 men on board, only 101 survived. We couldn't stop to offer any assistance because we were too valuable as a ship. The other ships in the area picked up those survivors. Now, paranormal experts that come you in here... You hit a boat, and y'all didn't stop? <laughs> you couldn't. Okay. At the speed we were going, it takes about 10 miles to stop. Wow. We would have been long gone. Wow. Yeah, and we were under strict orders not to stop for any reason. Right. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What did the paranormal experts uh, say? The experts come up here and they take their equipment and they put it here at the forward bow and they claim they've heard the sounds of metal twisting, mm -hmm. water rushing in, even banging coming from the forward end of the ship. Somebody on one of my tours, they were taking photos up here. I let my guests kind of stay behind as I head back mm -hmm. and they took a photo of this opening right here, the ones you guys are just standing in. Mm -hmm. They showed me the picture back upstairs and said, who's the guy looking back at me? Wow. Now. You guys had asked if I had ever seen anything on board the ship. Mm -hmm. I haven't, but I've had experiences. I've been coming here as a guest for a while now. Let's just put it that way. Uh, when I first started coming here, I would take these tours as a guest. And I was up here on the Haunted Encounters tour. And I'm standing in the back of the group and being a bit of a skeptic. I'm like, yeah, sure, right. I just want to see the ship. And so I'm standing all the way in the back. The captain was up here telling the story of the Curacao collision. I was tapped on the shoulder. I thought I was standing in somebody's way. So I turned and looked down behind me. There was nobody there. Wow. Hair stands up on end. Oh my God, it's all real. I have to keep doing this. <laughs> yeah. And so here So it began. began. It begins. <laughs> Absolutely. It's um, crazy. I get chills every time I come up to this part of the ship. I did too. Which is why I love coming up to this part of the ship. Yeah. Absolutely. And did you come up by yourself? Oh yeah. Yeah? Oh yeah. Somebody has to reach the light bulbs. It sounds like someone's up there. It does. And like I said, you can go up to where that acrylic is all the way at the top. It's just if there's anybody between here and there, that's when it gets interesting. Oh. Somebody's up there. I just saw a flashlight. Huh. I saw something on that Huh. Okay, what was that beeping? Hopefully it was somebody over there taking a picture, but... No, it was over here. And I did see a flash of something at the moment. It is currently called the Coronia Room. Uh, this was a third-class movie theater. So this is the stage back here where the tables and chairs are. Uh, the windows behind would open up, they'd drop a screen here, and they would backlight movies, and so you could see your third-class passengers in here. During World War II, this room was cleared out of the tables and chairs. Bunks were installed all the way up to the ceiling. This room housed about 81 people. In this one room? In this one room. Wow. 81 soldiers at a time. And you were only sleeping for six to eight hours, depending on how crowded the ship was, because at the end of your sleeping shift, you had to get out of your bunk because somebody was waiting to get in. Oh, wow. So your bed never cooled off. It was known as the hot rack or hot bunk system. They still use it on some military ships. But yeah, 81 people in this room. Wow. The windows would have all been painted over, uh, battleship gray. Mm -hmm. Every window was painted so light wouldn't give the ship away at night. 
Interesting. You open your portholes. Yeah. Since we are at the very forward end of the ship, um, there's a thing called shear to deck. If you look down the hotel corridors, it looks like the ship is bending in the middle, because it is. The ship bends so that it can flex over the rough North Atlantic waves. Uh, but here at the forward end of the ship in third class, you could really notice that bend. In fact, if you look at the ceilings, they're all angled upwards because of that slope. This is the forward-most passenger stairwell on the ship, stairwell number one. It has a design flaw. There are no landings halfway down. Every other staircase has at least one, sometimes more. This one, it's a straight shot all the way down to the deck below. The theory behind that is because third class ladies weren't often going to fancy dress parties and they didn't need a more gently rising stairwell because of their dresses and party shoes. So it's functional. Right. The small brass knobs, well, those are speed bumps designed to keep the children from sliding down the banisters <laughs> because just around the corner, is the third class children's nursery or playroom. It's that door right there. Those kids would often slide down, which would have been fun as you're riding yeah. up and down the waves. The triple, uh, trouble with this um, stairwell is in rough weather, the stairwell could rise with the ship until it's nearly vertical or drop two to three stories beneath you as the ship comes crashing down the other side. October 10th, 1954, George Sidney Wayman tourist class passenger collapsed on forward stairwell and died suddenly. Wow. That's the original floor surface down below. It's a corkoid, a cork rubber mixture designed to be non-skid when wet. Covered all the carpeted areas you see on the ship all used to look like that. But underneath it is steel plate. Wow. Now people have come around here. We have offices down below, and so we pass up and down the stairwell often. We've had guides that come around the corner and they see a man standing here kind of disappear from view, and as they come up, he's not anywhere to be found. Wow. So we still think he's... The children's playroom is this door right here, so that's another spot you might want to check out. Investigate. Yeah. Third class nursery. Mm -hmm. And you can just go in? No. No? <laughs> None of us can. No one? How come? Well, that was used as a storeroom for a wine tasting center that we had upstairs. It's not there anymore. That's why the lock is so uh, oh, industrial. So, yeah. They're, they're plain. And so she started drawing with her boyfriend. He was an illustrator as well. And so they would draw cartoon faces on the boxes. She capped the pens, locked the door, left for the night, took the only key. When she came back the next morning, un unlocked the door, turned the lights on. Pens were still capped right where she left them. There were just a lot more faces. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's fun. That's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. Cool. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I apologize for all of the jump cuts between each space, but finally being there and soaking it all up had me so excited. I was literally just filming nonstop, and after reviewing the footage, I knew I had to share it with you guys too. I love you guys so much, and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Bye, guys.